In June 2025, Toyota chairman Akio Toyota made himself a bit of a laughing stock and stirred massive controversy by asserting that one electric vehicle pollutes as much as three hybrids over its lifetime. A claim that has been debunked many times by scientists around the world. This statement challenges the prevailing view that EVs are a cornerstone of sustainable transportation, offering a cleaner alternative to both hybrids and internal combustion vehicles. And it flies in the face of logic and reason. While Toyota's remark highlights concerns about electric generation and battery production, which used to be valid, a wealth of scientific evidence contradicts his assertion, demonstrating that EVs produce much lower life cycle emissions than either hybrids or gasoline powered cars. Let's have a look at the difference between the two from a scientific perspective to, to basically debunk completely Toyota's claims about three hybrids producing the same amount of CO2 as one electric car. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. It's great to have you with us. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. To fairly compare EVs, hybrids, and internal combustion vehicles, we're going to look beyond tailpipe emissions and consider their life cycle emissions. These include manufacturing emissions, energy and materials used to build the vehicle, including batteries for EVs and hybrids, fuel production emissions, emissions from producing gasoline or generating electricity, operational emissions, pollution emitted while driving, end of life emissions, impacts from recycling or disposal. Toyota's claim emphasizes the upfront emissions from EV battery production, which is true, are higher, and the carbon intensity of some electricity grids. However, comprehensive studies reveal that EVs more than offset these initial impacts over time. The scientific consensus has been the same now for many years. EVs outperform hybrids and internal combustion vehicles. Numerous studies from reputable organizations consistently show that EVs have lower life cycle emissions everywhere than both hybrids and internal combustion, even when accounting for battery production and variable grid conditions. So, hey guys, I've got uh, a, an EcoFlow Delta II right here and the Delta Pro, which is about four times bigger than this. I've used them over the past two months many times. I didn't think I would, but I've needed them. There's been electrical problems in the house. There's been uh, massive storms here in Australia. They've been absolutely, for me, game-changing, life-saving, up to 45% off sale. I'll put a link in the description, and I think that's on for the next three weeks. So click on that link. You can take advantage and get one of these batteries for a really good price. But even if a grid is predominantly using coal, that is still the case. And the research we've done so far is actually massively skewed towards hybrids and towards internal combustion. Because the research assumes that EVs last for the same amount of time that internal combustion cars last for, which is actually not true. And it also assumes that EV batteries only last for about 200,000 kilometers, which is also equally untrue. Key findings from global research. Union of Concerned Scientists a UCS study found that EVs produce fewer global warming emissions than the average new gasoline car across all regions in the United States, even factoring in battery manufacturing and electricity generation. In areas with cleaner grids, the advantage is even more pronounced. If you use your car and predominantly charge it from your own solar, then the difference is enormous. It's not even worth comparing. International Council on Clean Transportation, the ICCT. The ICCT's global analysis concluded that EVs emit less greenhouse gas over their life cycle than comparable gasoline cars, regardless of the region or the country anywhere in the world, even in countries with carbon heavy grids like China or India. That said, China's grid is massively, massively revolutionizing. In fact, 40% of the power in China's grid last year was renewable. This year, it's likely to hit 50%. The Argonne National Laboratory. Using the GREET model, or called the GREET model, the US Department of Energy found that EVs outperform hybrids and internal combustion vehicles in life cycle emissions with benefits growing as grids incorporate more renewables. And that's obviously happening every year. European Federation for Transport and Environment, TNE. A 2024 TNE report revealed that EVs in Europe 
emit three times less CO2 than equivalent petrol cars or hybrids from Toyota over their lifetime, thanks to lower operational emissions. And that report also pointed out the fact that hybrids, particularly plug-in hybrids in Europe, are rarely driven as electric cars. They're simply driven using gasoline or petrol, and they're actually much dirtier than claimed. EVs versus hybrids, a direct comparison. Hybrids, which combine a gasoline engine with a small battery, in the case of Toyotas, quite very small batteries, reduce emissions compared to traditional internal combustion vehicles, but still rely very heavily on fossil fuels. A study published in Environmental Science and Technology compared life cycle emissions across vehicle types. EVs had the lowest emissions, including the production of the batteries, thanks to zero tailpipe pollution and improving grid decarbonisation. Plug-in hybrids, higher emissions than EVs, but lower than conventional cars as they split operation between electricity and gasoline. But as I mentioned before, that's a bit problematic because many people who own plug-in hybrids don't actually charge the battery at all. Conventional internal combustion engine vehicles had the highest emissions due to continuous fossil fuel use. This hierarchy holds true, said the publication, even in regions with less clean electricity, though the gap narrows slightly. Over time, as grids shift to renewables and as people choose to power their cars with solar because it's free, EVs pull much farther ahead. And of course, the minerals in those batteries, right, don't need to be mined again. Your battery will be recycled eventually after hundreds of thousands of miles, maybe even more than that, maybe even a million. I mean, we're getting to that point now where some batteries are capable of incredible amounts of distance. But even then, those batteries will be recycled and we won't need to mine them and then future EVs, their carbon emissions numbers will be much, much lower than today. The electricity grid factor plays a part though. Toyota's argument partly rests on the idea that EVs charged with coal heavy electricity, like in Japan, might not be as clean as hybrids. Now, of course, his comment is just pure propaganda, but there is some merit here, sort of. The data still favors EVs though. A 2022 Xinhua University study in China where coal dominates the grid found that EVs emit 20 to 30 percent less CO2 than hybrids. The China Automotive Technology and Research Center, CATARC, calculated that a compact EV in China emits around 118 grams of CO2 per kilometer across its life cycle compared to 163 for a gasoline vehicle or one with a very, very small battery. Globally, grids are decarbonizing rapidly. The International Energy Agency, IEA, projects that renewable energy will account for around 50% of global electricity by 2030, shrinking EV charging emissions even further. Battery production. It's a short-term cost, but a very long-term gain. EV critics often highlight the carbon footprint of battery production, which is more intensive than manufacturing internal combustion engine vehicles or hybrid powertrains. However, however, this carbon debt is only temporary. Argonne National Laboratory in 2023 said EVs offset their manufacturing emissions after only 19,000 miles or 31,000 kilometers of driving compared to gasoline cars. So it doesn't take very long at all. Nature 2021 said the break-even point was at around, at around 28,000 miles. But the truth is, that the more recent the studies, the better they're looking for EVs. Basically what this means is, EVs are becoming cleaner and cleaner to produce every single year. Moreover, battery production is becoming cleaner. CATARC estimates a 15% drop in battery carbon intensity from 2020 to 2024. And that's driven by advances in manufacturing and also in recycling. But there's more evidence for reinforcing EVs edge. Beyond the studies cited in this video, other research bolsters the case for EVs. Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, a 2022 MIT study found that EVs in the United States emit 50 to 70% less CO2 over their life cycle than internal combustion vehicles, even with current grid mixes being more fossil fuel dependent. 50 to 70% less CO2. And that's assuming you only charge from the grid. You don't have any solar at all. Transport and Environment UK. EVs in the UK emit 66% less CO2 than diesel cars over their entire lifetime, a gap expected to widen with greener energy policies. 
These findings clearly align with the broader trend. EVs and electric cars, environmental benefits scale with improvements in technology and with improvements in infrastructure. So the future of clean transportation, is it hybrids? Because apparently according to Toyota, uh, three hybrids are equivalent to one EV. Well, the case for EV strengthens as several factors converge. One, renewable energy sector growth. Solar wind and hydro are reducing the carbon footprint of electricity worldwide, and it's never been faster. Those technologies, or particularly solar wind and batteries, are being installed at the fastest rates in human history in 2025. Number two, battery enhancements. New chemistries and recycling programs are cutting manufacturing emissions. Number three, policy support. Governments are incentivizing EV adoption and phasing out fossil fuel vehicles. 2035, internal combustion will be banned in many places around the world. Hybrids, whilst they were a valuable bridge technology, cannot possibly match this trajectory. Their reliance on gasoline limits their long-term potential. Whether that's in accordance to their CO2 emissions or simply their resale value in the future when you're trying to sell one and no one, want, no one actually wants them anymore. Whereas EVs align with a fully decarbonized future. So how do we conclude all this? Well, Toyota's chairman raises some important questions about the complexities of vehicle emissions. Um, but he does so at the same time by making completely false and baseless claims. However, the scientific consensus is abundantly clear. EVs are much cleaner over their lifetime than hybrids or internal combustion vehicles. Studies from the UCS, ICCT, Argon, TNE, and others demonstrate that EVs lower operational emissions and improving production processes outweigh the challenges Toyota highlights. This could be more down to the fact that Toyota doesn't make a profit selling EVs. It's worth considering that there is some clear vested interest here. And as grids decarbonize and technology continues to advance, EVs will solidify their position as the most sustainable option for reducing transportation's environmental impact. Hybrids may play a role in the interim, but the future belongs to electric.